the key thing is, is the way consumers buy has changed. 52% of consumers begin their buying journey on the marketplace, wow. like Amazon, eBay. Half the sales made, uh, e-commerce sales made in America are on Amazon. People coming to a marketplace, they have high buyer intent. Basically, you are selling where consumers are buying, and that, that's the key reason to be on marketplaces like Amazon. Welcome to a Kiwi Original. This is episode six, and today I'm speaking with Hamish Conway from Cell Global, a company that is expert in getting you set up on Amazon, whether you're a retailer or a manufacturer. Uh, there are a lot of, um, I'd say, details and things that it's quite difficult to get your head around when you're new to a platform like Amazon. Uh, and that's why I've brought Hamish on the show today to really get an understanding from him of uh, what it's all about so that you as the listener, whether you're in business or a buyer, uh, can understand the Amazon platform a little bit better. So Hamish, great to have you on the show today. Thanks so much, Ryan. Great to be here. So what does Sell Global do? So what we do is, obviously, as you said there, we help companies specifically on the Amazon platform. And it's everything from them getting set up on the platform, actually firstly deciding is it a good idea and uh, looking at all the compliance, the money, the competition to see if there is the, the appropriate level of demand. And then we get them, get an account open, we get their brand all presented well on the platform, help them with logistics because people are basically exporting. So we've got to help them, we also help with that. And then once people are live on the platform, we then help them succeed on the platform by uh, helping them with advertising. We've got sophisticated AI software to do the advertising on Amazon. Maybe we'll touch on that later because it's really interesting where that's heading. And and also just the day-to-day -day running off the platform and how to really just make it operate smoothly and efficiently for you. So so that's really how we work with um, or what we do. And, and we work with a range of companies from smaller ones to bigger public listed companies, et cetera. So, all in between. In some cases, we train people. In other cases, we do it for people. But uh, that's the the general idea of what we do. <laughs> so I guess for a lot of businesses that are listening or watching this, they probably have experience in e-commerce where they've set up their own website, they have a domain, uh, they have started selling products on it um, to consumers, and maybe they've had some success. What's different with setting up a store on Amazon uh, from setting up your own e-commerce presence with your own domain name? Sure, good question. So the key thing is, is the way consumers buy has changed. And I, I saw a stat um, a year ago that was a, an Australian stat that had 52% of consumers begin their buying journey on the marketplace, wow. like Amazon, eBay, Catch, for example, in America, Half the sales made, uh, e-commerce sales made in America are on Amazon. And that's where people begin their, their buying journey. So basically these marketplaces, you know, bring the eyeballs. They bring the eyeballs to your product. So versus your own uh, website that you've got, to, you've got to drive all the traffic there through socials and paid, et cetera. But people coming to a marketplace, they have high buyer intent. They're there to make purchasing decisions, and that's why, particularly on Amazon, you can see some really high conversion rates. Um, not uncommon to be 20% plus, and even you know some people at the moment are north of 50% compared to your own e-commerce, which can be in the two to five percent category. So basically, you are selling where consumers are buying, and that that's the key reason to be on marketplaces like Amazon. Right. So the difference there is with an e-commerce site that you set up, you've got to attract people to your site and do all the work to get that to happen digitally. Whereas with Amazon, you're setting up your store in a digital mall where everyone's already there. There are people already buying and you let Amazon do uh, the filtering, if you like. So you're getting people into your store that are the highest likelihood of buying your products. Is that have I framed that right? Yeah, you have. Yeah, correct. People are searching for the for the product, or they've got key search terms there, and and you you show up for those there if you do the right things, and then people buy. I'd also add there's a second point to this, and and that is trust. Consumers trust the brand of Amazon, particularly in the US. They they win consumer awards. Amazon is all about the customer, and so the customer has this trust because they know if something goes wrong, they'll get their money back. 
They also trust the two-day delivery. Um, obviously, at times, sometimes it's not happening, <laughs> but um, it, like at the moment, but it's trust is a big difference. And that's why the conversion rates are so high, whereas a lot of uh, individual uh, e-commerce stores for a brand, you've got to build that trust with the consumer. So that can be another barrier or resistance to people buying from an e-commerce store. Okay, so there's some pros and cons there, isn't there, around the the branding element to it? Because um, if you do set up your own e-commerce site, you can make it look and feel uniquely to you, particularly if you're a a luxury brand or a a gourmet brand. Um, Do you think there's some considerations of, does that get lost when you put your products in an Amazon environment where, um, yes, great that the consumer trusts it, uh, but do you get lost in a shopping cart approach rather than a a um, brand-based approach? It's a good question there. And again, with the buying journey, consumers are, are, do bounce around, right? So they will, if they see you on Amazon first through like a headline ad, they get to your listing page, which is a bit more restricted. You can have um, what's called a storefront, which is a bit like a mini web page for your brand on the platform with just your products. When people go to a listing, you've got seven photos, you've got text and then a plus pages down the bottom. So you can do your brand to a certain extent. Okay. Depending on the, the product and probably the dollar value, the higher the dollar value, the more likely the consumer is to go and find out more about your brand. And that's where they will Google you. And then they'll see your web page or they'll see your socials to try and get, you know, what are people saying about your about your brand? And in many cases you can't tell the full story of your brand, but you can do that on your web page. So we 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 say obviously have both because the two will support each other. And, and from a conversion point of view, they still may choose to buy on Amazon, even though they've been to your website, because they just trust the fulfillment and the two-day promise. And if anything goes wrong, they know they can get their money back. So it, it's kind of thinking about how can you have your website work in partnership, really, with these marketplaces. So that, that's kind of the, the view to take. Hmm. Now, you've been in this Amazon platform space for some time. For a lot of manufacturers that uh, Buy New Zealand Made represents, this may be the first time they're hearing about it uh, as a potential option to set up shop. Uh, given that we're in 2020 now, uh, what, are the, you know, what are the hot categories or what are the types of products or prices or quality level? What are the types of attributes um, for a product that's manufactured uh, if a company wants to get into the US, you know, the home of Amazon to reach those consumers, what type of category should they be thinking about? So to kind of answer that, I'll, I'll kind of let you know how I, a little bit of the backstory and how I got going sure. on, uh, on, on helping other companies. So a big change happened on, has happened on Amazon and that has been Amazon directly going to China to get to kind of cut out the middleman. When I started selling on Amazon, I was going to China getting um, products like I was in the baby category. So thinking like nappy bags and uh, um, car seat protectors and those sort of products that I could find, put my brand on it, send it to Amazon and it sold, went like gangbusters straight out of the gate. We did seven figures in our first full year. That would, you just wouldn't do in a normal retail environment. But what happened is Amazon thought, well, uh, they don't like the likes of me being in the middle there. So they went uh, to China and this was back in 2017 um, that they started to put a big push in there and they would have events where 5,000 Chinese companies would turn up and Amazon was going, hello, we'll waive your fees for the first six months, etc." So they, So there's been this flood of Chinese co- uh, companies selling into America in those sort of products that you might expect and kind of electronics or those commodity type products that um, are on the platform there that it makes it really hard to compete from a price point of view on those sort of on those sort of products. So and now the percentage of sellers on Amazon that are from China is in the high 40%. Wow. So it's it's gone from like 1% back in, you know, at the at the start of 2000 11, 12, 13 sort of thing to now 49%. So it's, um, so if you have got products that are directly competing with a, with a Chinese 
uh, manufacturer and prices the game, you're never going to win that game. So it really becomes then about premium. And so this is where, for me, there was a, there started to be a flood of customer, a flood of people coming onto the platform, and there was this um, pressure on price. And because my products were, I had no defensible point of difference. So basically, people could put their label on it and start selling it as well. And then it became about price, and it just started to not work. And so then that was when I started to turn my attention back to New Zealand and go, right, there's got to be products here that have a defensible point of difference. And that could either be around the materials it's made with in terms of clothing or, um, or kids' toys in terms of the, the natural products or the ingredients in the food or, you know, unique designs that come out of New Zealand, actually, interestingly, in, in the agriculture kind of space as well. So, so it's really this, this look for defensible points of difference that were really needed to go and compete. And then the good thing with that though, is that you can sell at a premium on Amazon. And so many people think Amazon and they associate that with cheap. And Amazon kind of wants you to think that, but the reality is that we have companies selling products on Amazon in America in particular, where they are selling at nearly twice what they sell it for in New Zealand. And their price in um, you know, that's given the exchange rate, but also their prices nearly double that of the competition, yet they are far outselling the competition because they do have that, that brand story, that uniqueness, that defensible point of difference with the product. So, so that's really the first place to, to begin with in terms of before, you know, because there's lots of categories that can work, but it's just within that category. Um, can you have a defensible point of difference? Does that make sense? It does, and to to add to that, does that mean that uh, as those uh, Amazon has attracted the Chinese buyers to the marketplace, does that mean that it creates more um, opportunity for countries that have always sold on premium because of our scarcity, like New Zealand, like the brand New Zealand? Uh, does that provide opportunities for us? And if so, how does a business go about deciding or defining whether this is a, a platform that they should be playing in for the category of product that they currently make. So it really begins with having a look at the, at the com competitive landscape. You know? so, so you do, you're, you're looking for pockets where there's not too much competition. And we look at like the amount of reviews and how long a, a competitor has been on the platform. Amazon does reward the incumbent just with um, pure time on the platform in terms of the amount of reviews or the amount of search and buyers. You know, for Amazon, it's like a safe bet to put forward the incumbents yeah. because they know, the, they know the metrics. That said, when you do begin, Amazon does give you like an unofficial 30 days of, of love, we call it, where it's like, show us what you've got <laughs> in terms of the conversion rate and relevancy for the um, for their for their buyers, but ultimately you've got to overcome the incumbents, and that does just take time. And usually it is like a 12 to 15 or even 18 month journey to really hit the numbers that you want to hit. And and so you you do need to be be patient. But I'm kind of looping back around in terms of looking at how do you know if it's going to work? Well, you're looking at the competition in terms of you know how they are presenting themselves, like for like. Is there a way that you can stand out from them from a price point of view? Where do you sit? And uh, in price, you can use that in a number of ways. Like there is what is the cost to actually produce it, ship it there and the Amazon fees and mm -hmm. what's the profit. So you do need to look at, look at that. But ultimately it's weighing up all these factors of the demand. We've got certain tools that we use to, we can look at competitor sales um, based on their best seller rank. So there's transparency there in that data and within plus or minus 10%, you can really, you can get a pretty close estimate of what their sales are. So you, you, you kind of see the market size, you can, there's tools that help with demand and what people are searching for, but also looking at competitors' reviews, seeing and one star review, seeing what people don't like about it. And then, uh, you know, can you kind of turn those to your advantage if, if you solve those problems for people? So we look at all of that, including compliance side of things with Amazon, because sometimes people need to bundle products uh, into a, like a, sick, a pack of six or, you know, put two products together. So you're looking for a point of difference that way as well, in terms of how you can bundle to present differently. So it is really doing that initial work there to go, is this a good idea? And if so, 
what's the money look like and um, you know what could I expect uh, sales wise as I go into this into this category so it's quite a, quite an interesting sort of journey early on and you learn a lot through that process about um, you know the, the probability of success on Amazon sorry to interrupt this won't take long subscribe to the show and you'll never miss another one of these amazing episodes right back to the show i mean that's really good insight and, and certainly reflects my own personal experience when i, I authored a, a book and uh, had it published independently so uh, got the physical hard cover, cover copies uh, but I had a bunch of friends over in London and they said, look, I really want a copy of your book. And I said, well, it, it, it weighs two kilos. It's going to cost $60 to get it to you. And they're like, well, why, why isn't it on Amazon? I said, I don't know. Uh, I've got hardcovers though. And they're like, just put it on Amazon. I just want to put it in my Amazon Prime account so I get free delivery. Uh, so I had to work out a way of taking the, what was, you know, a 330 page PDF and navigating Amazon systems. And I would say that it took a lot of time. You know, Amazon originally was just about authors. It took a lot of time. There's a lot of tick boxes. You have to get your titles right. You have to set up as an author. Uh, then you have to get your shipping and your regions right and the weight right. So there's a lot of preciseness I didn't have to do for my own e-commerce uh, book site. So you could buy my book at businesskiwi.com, but then to buy it on Amazon, it, this was all new to, to me working this out. Uh, so it wasn't a channel, ultimately it wasn't a channel that made me a lot of money on the book as such, but what it did was introduce my product, if you like, to places and people that wouldn't have ordinarily purchased it. And so uh, for that side of it, it was valuable. Then I, I went another a step further and I published four really short books, um, kids books, just pick a path because I was waiting. I had some time uh, between when the book was finished and when it actually came out. Uh, so I thought I'm going to continue learning with Amazon. So I made these four little books just to test keywords like do kids uh, books with polar bears. Is that rank higher than turtles? Does that rank lower than kiwis? And does that rank higher than electric eels? So these are really just um, a B testing. If you like, they were had rainbow colors yeah. as the book titles. And man, you can learn a lot. So um, maybe if you could talk about the Amazon marketing services, the, you know, the, the Google ads equivalent that's built into Amazon when or if your products aren't in the top 10, how you can still get them found uh, for those people that are using Amazon as search first for products. Yeah, it's a good question. And, you know, Amazon is ultimately the, is a search engine database right with the, but it's got actual data of what people have searched and then bought amazon's got this wealth of big data it's, in, it's incredible and they've really turned the tap on in the last year in particular on how they use that amazon is now number three on the paid per click advertising wow. and, and that whole game you know they they do now 10 billion dollars in that space there's google and facebook in front of them and i did see a um a graph the other day that was from uh, 50 top spenders that cumulatively spent like $14 billion on ad spend uh, in, in America. And it had this graph from Facebook spend and Amazon spend and the Facebook spend was dropping and the Amazon spend was increasing uh, to where the gap was, you know, nearly closed. And so what's happening now, Amazon's really starting to open up all this data to, to brands to reach consumers on the platform. So you've got, um, if, you, if you've got a US trademark, it opens up some more options in terms of uh, headline, headline banner, banner ads that people then click through to go to your storefront. Or within just the search, you've got top of the search, middle of the search, or bottom of the search, your product ad can start showing up. There's even now, um, you can have retargeting off your uh, product on other websites out of Amazon. So it's called Amazon Display networks so some of that is in beta and just early early days but it's and there's now dynamic bidding it's a big deal like if you're not advertising on amazon using the uh using that as a tool you you just it won't work <laughs> basically so you need to be doing it it's getting increasingly complex though which is the other thing so 
middle of last year, we um, knew that this complexity was was upon us, and so we went down the rabbit hole of uh, AI uh, machine learning software to help automate a lot of, in particular, a lot of the data crunching that comes out of it to make better decisions and be way more efficient around advertising. And to give you a hint, like we were, we had a guy who was super smart dude, and he was doing three to four hundred grand a month and ad spend um, across across all the all the clients that I mean he had his own stuff and was also doing work for us smart like a maths brain one of those guys who go you know just does all the maths in his head from go to Y. and look we once we've implemented the AI software mm-hmm. within six weeks the results were incredible like people were for the same spend were getting twice the sales or you know that half of their spend and increased sales it was just like the you know, having the top of the drawer AI software is like really important in this game. Doing it manually is uh, you just humans' brains aren't, we're not made to crunch that amount of data. So that's been a really interesting development. But basically, what it means is you can get onto page one when people search, and that's when the buying happens. Like it's eight, over 80% of sales happen from page one. So you want to get onto page one, and early on, that's what you do, that's your investment early on on Amazon is you, you'll spend like probably quite, quite a high percentage of sales on advertising, but that's the momentum that you get. And then over time, the percentage of advertising spend to sales will, will decrease. But it's a, it's a really important piece and it's super dynamic at the moment and it's uh, changing all the time. And as Amazon really wants to take on Google and Facebook and that whole spend. And just one other thing to add to that that's been really interesting is Brands are now using Amazon as a way to build their brand. I was going to ask you about that, yeah. To make a profit on Amazon with that. They're going, well, look, we want to be seen here because we know people are going to buy our products in in stores, um, on our own website or wherever. So they are going big on Amazon. And that can make it a bit tougher for some smaller players. But it's a really interesting thing. And even in Australia, like the opportunity there, if people are in Aussie to be, um, you know, Amazon now gets 20, well, at the end of December, it had 28 million visitors a month, which is, so it's growing at a million and a half um, visits a month. So it's really starting to kick in. But that's what we'll start to see is brands being where customers are, getting their eyeballs, building brand awareness, acquiring customers, bringing them then into their own ecosystem get them to test their food or whatever it might be and then continue on from there so so the whole game of where people are advertising and the whole mix of advertising is really now starting to include amazon and it's uh it's getting really interesting i, I think it, it's um the, the part that excites me is that uh for a new zealand manufacturer that may be in christchurch or ashburton or invercargill uh there is a, a place where they can sell their products without having to either employ web designers or a web agency to build and have these big capital costs. Um, but on the, the flip side of that, and I think this is the part that would concern me if I was a trader, uh, which I, I don't count my book authoring as, is that because the data is transparent, then you're opening up to your competitors, if you put all your products on there, uh, everything to do with what your sales are in that region. So is the strategy to put all your products on there or just a few of them to then hopefully audience funnel them back to your e-commerce site where you've got all the margin a better experience uh, and you don't have to necessarily uh, be put in a shopping cart experience with other amazon uh, with your competitors Mm. look it's that's a really good it's a really good observation ryan and and it, it can vary depending on the country like say for if you're going to the US for a start, like normally we say, look, just start with three to five products max, okay. and because you want to, you've got to focus your efforts, focus your resources on less, but doing it better to to penetrate the, the you know, to get out of obscurity, and 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 then then you could bring in some other products after that can ride on the coattails somewhat. So there is like less but better for a start, um, but to. And then, then South Australia, for example, where it's uh, it's kind of newer, you might go broader, and just to get more brand awareness there. But to answer your question about you know should you put everything there or do you put some on your website? Look, that 
that actually can be a really a good idea. And there's some, particularly brands that have a lot of SKUs, you know, like say clothing companies or, um, you know, where they've got different sizes and colors and, and it just gets logistically a bit challenging to have everything on, um, on Amazon or in their warehouses, which we might touch on in a moment. So then the answer is yes, you're going to have your evergreen sort of products on Amazon because Amazon likes more evergreen products than seasonal, but then you could have on your website more seasonal products that, uh, that you have. And you can even with your pricing, you might even have your pricing be more attractive on your own website. Um, even if it's just by, you know, a dollar or five, depending on what it is. So when people get to your website, they go, oh, there's a little bit less there and I can see everything else that they do. So that is a good option. And this is where Amazon or Marketplace is really about brand awareness. It's about um, getting leads back to your website is a completely valid reason why you should be on these marketplaces as a, as a way of lead generation, basically, for your website. Okay, so it's not a necessarily a replacement for the e-commerce infrastructure. Uh, it is a it is a platform based approach where you should still look at both areas. Um, what I mean, we talked about how you you know one of the first products that you had on Amazon. What Hamish got you into this space to start with? Like what what um, was the thing that you went actually Amazon's an opportunity. I'm going to get in amongst this. So look, I, yeah, good good questions. I, I've had. I had my first business when I was 24, and it was uh, it was a like a corporate events team building type business and um, eco like educational tourism sort of business. So I had that for nine years. Sold that. I was doing sales and marketing for a number of companies, and then I uh, was in an accounting firm, and I, I was an accountant out of university originally. So, um, and then I but ended up selling that. Ended up in a bigger accounting group, and. After like a year and a half, I was like, this is not really me. Um, and so I started to look for something to do that wasn't going to be in conflict with what I was doing. So in that account, I wasn't doing accounting. I was doing more business um, business development, business growth um, for clients. But anyway, long story short, I had a two-year-old at the time. And so and a, then a mentor of mine said, hey, you should have a look at Amazon. This is back in 2013. And so I did, and then I so I invested money in this uh, in this course, and and uh, and I followed it. I just got stuck in over a three month period, and then I bought my first uh, two hundred units out of China, which was this um, foam edging to put on uh, you know tables and benches and things. So if kids whack their heads on it, they won't you know won't won't bleed. <laughs> um, anyway, so so that was my first product, and I. You know, I sent my money away, crossed my fingers, and then, you know, next thing, it's in Amazon the first day I sold like six units. I was like, holy crap, this actually works. And so it was amazing. The next day, it might have been four, and then it was tracking along. I sold out of my first 200 units before I could get more in stock. Um, and then I got it in stock, and then I just really went from there. It was, uh, so I was kind of, I had my opportunity eyes on, and um, and I'd learned the skills I needed to learn and, and took the actions I needed to take and and then uh, just did that, that product and then added some other products and kept on just kept on going and learning and then went to uh, the UK and Europe and uh, then I was even selling US brands into UK and Europe mm -hmm. so it was um, yeah so that was kind of the the journey or <laughs> well, how I got started really and it was baby products because I had a, had a two-year-old <laughs> it's so classic yeah. what, what was the point where you started offering um, your expertise in this to other businesses and who are some of your current uh, either clients if you could talk about them or success stories and products that you currently represent and, and do the Amazon work on behalf of yeah good good stuff so started it back in um, 2016, so four years ago actually, was uh, when things started. And and after I got started on Amazon, I had um, a friend in the in the in the Island Bay where I live uh, area, and got her started as well. And she did really well. You know, Sophie, and she was selling like wool dry balls, and they just took off. And so we're both going quite well separately. And people were asking us like, Hey, I hear you going right on Amazon. Can you help? And so again, the company's asking, and then so we just thought well we should probably formalize this into a company and, and do that so that's what we did so we formalized it into a company and um 
And so, and early on, we had, uh, so there was some like uh, Manuka honey companies. So, so worked with a um, number of Manuka honey companies. There was even a guy, uh, Luke, who had been selling into China, but some channels got cut off there. So he was looking for a new, new way in. And so he's got beeswax crowns, um, honey sticks. And, and so Amazon's been a tremendous success for, for that company. And, um, still, still is to this day, and particularly with a lot of kids at home, and uh, it's got a point of difference. Goes, goes great. We've also got some um, uh, guy Graham who has these automatic chicken feeders, and so it's some really amazing New Zealand design. It is made in China, shipped from China over to us uh, to USA, and so you know it's quite as a premium product um, for Amazon, and it sells sells great, and coming into season to sell more. There's even, you know, companies like we work with a company called Bliss Technology. Some people may recognize this from the supermarket. And um, if you can get some of these, go get them. They're awesome. I use them. And oh, actually, I am a shareholder. I've got like $500 of shares or 500 shares or something. <laughs> anyway, um, but no, these guys, they've, they've been great. Like they were, a good story with these guys is they really, they knew they needed to access these other markets. And they they were patient and invested and in the success of it and now they're totally reaping the rewards kind of 18 18 months on and this is like it is a, a game you don't dabble at you've got to commit to it and when you commit it's when it when it pays off so um i mean so that there's a few clients there or you know kind of four clients that we've worked with and there's been even some peanut butter companies that people would know and uh getting them set up and, and running so yeah i mean there's there's been now we've probably because we work with companies in different ways um, there's also like Gallagher, you know, fencing, you know, yeah. agri sort of sort of space as well. Um, we're with nearly 150 to 200 companies now. I should know the exact number, but it's a lot. Yeah, and getting getting people uh, set up and running on Amazon. Mm. What's the first step? Like, if someone's listening, they're running a business. Yeah. They're like, actually, I've yeah. wanted to get into the US or Australia. Uh, but I don't want to get on a plane. I don't want to spend the time away from my family. I know it's a good market. Um, I didn't realize that Amazon may be a way for me to to dip my toes in over 12 to 18 months without getting on a plane. Um, how do they engage with Sell Global? What's what what's the process from you know them deciding I'm interested? Sure. So. What people could do is probably a couple of things. And so actually, so we've got a website that is sellglobal.co.nz. And if you go forward slash um, buy NZ, you can, uh, there's a 16 point criteria to look at, you know, is the probability of success on Amazon there for you? So I recommend go and go and do that. Also, when you're on the website, we've got some great um, blogs and videos there just to explain a lot of the terms of Amazon, like what does FBA mean? and and how does that fulfillment work, et cetera. So there's some really good content there. And then what I would recommend is um, booking a call with myself and and there's no charge for that. Like 45 minutes, we authentically go through, is this a good idea for you or not? It might be it's a good idea, but not now, as you've got to get a few other things sorted out first, um, be it around compliance or some other areas in your business. But that's really the best way right now. And, and I know for many companies in this new environment, um, where other channels have dried up or reduced dramatically. It's, you know, Amazon is going ballistic. They are looking for 100,000 new employees to handle fulfillment <laughs> um, at the moment. And just this whole shift, obviously, with, with what's going on now, but this will continue um, for a long time as I think habits of buyers will change. So I think you know, speed is important now. So I think have a call with me. You can book that on the website as well. Um, just book a call, a couple of questions to make the for you to answer so we can have, make the best use of the call. And what we'll do is we'll look on Amazon, we'll look at the competition, we'll see some numbers and see is it saturated or is it too competitive or is it actually, you know, an opportunity there. So that that's really probably the best idea. And, you know, just let's talk, you know, like <laughs> that's usually the best approach. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's a very good sum up. So what I'll make sure is that the uh, that link that you just gave, I'll put that in the show notes so people can click on it and go straight through to it, as well as uh, your details to be able to uh, to book a call. And and certainly for 
if you're in businesses, it's a, a smart thing to sometimes look beyond the day to day, look beyond the operational, look beyond uh, your current systems and customers and suppliers. And uh, certainly when there is times of volatility, it makes sense to not just focus on the, the day to day, but look at the horizon, like what will be the ultimate outcome of uh, events that are going on and how do you want to position yourself? Because I think uh, wherever there's volatility, there is uh, opportunity as well as challenges and businesses with the resources and capital that particularly manufacturers have, uh, they're rightly poised to be able to uh, leverage some of these direct to consumer plays that historically have been you know, US or UK focused. And now those are almost fished out for a lot of businesses. Uh, finally, Australia and New Zealand are getting some, some opportunities. Um, one question I haven't asked as we kind of wrap this up, uh, Hamish, is the the Buy New Zealand Made logo, um, how important is that on a platform like Amazon? Good question, good question. So I think that this, like firstly, the product needs to just work for the consumer. Like that, that's a, that's an important piece. And then, then I think Buy New Zealand Made in America will have some, wait like there was rightly or wrongly you know an anti made in china kind of a sentiment with you and I'm, I, I don't agree or disagree with that but having a buy new zealand made is a point of difference it's another kind of reason in the stack of reasons why people should buy from you certainly products like manuka honey it, it absolutely helps helps with that and um but there is a like east, uh, well west coast, sorry, off um, off America and the east coast is kind of the main New Zealand audience there. So they, a lot of them know the eco mums, for example, know about New Zealand, and so it, it does carry some weight. But it can't be the main reason, right? It, the product has to work in and of itself and get, and provide real benefit and be a quality product initially. Yeah. So that's uh, that's good to hear from your perspective. That's the same thing I say to manufacturers: is that you have uh, intrinsic benefits of a product and extrinsic benefits. The intrinsic ones are things that you're buying to solve the problem for. So these are the yeah. features, these are the benefits or the outcomes you can expect. Whereas extrinsic are more. It might be a trust thing. It might be a ego thing because it it has this country of origin uh, about it, which means I can trust yeah. it, or which means that I can show my friends because it represents a little bit more of my own personal brand. Um, and I and I think that's probably the the opportunity. I'd be interested to see um, with some of your testing uh, where uh, NZ Made makes a significant difference, and also where it's risk. Like where should it not be on a product and Maybe that's a question for a follow-up episode, um, but certainly something to consider on these platforms to make you stand out from uh, products that are from developing countries or from from countries maybe that uh, aren't seen not with the same perception as New Zealand. Mm, mm. Yeah, it's a good point, and there is a risk potentially in the future around food miles, for example, mm -hmm. as uh, if consumers become more conscious of that aspect that was mentioned at a conference I was at uh, around natural products uh, last year. But um, yeah, so th that, is, that is just the thought, yeah, initially. <laughs> is there any so. other question, Hamish, that I haven't asked you or, or area you want to uh, discuss before we uh, finish up this, uh, this call? Yeah, I think Amazon Australia, actually, and its impact on New Zealand because as a New Zealanders, we can't yet buy off Amazon Australia, which is uh -huh. it's annoying, but it should be should be soon. I was actually meant to catch up with them tomorrow in Australia, but I'm not traveling now. Um, but hopefully that switch gets flipped very soon because what that'll mean is New Zealanders will then start to buy on this platform. And how that will look is it says manufacturer in Auckland and they've listed on Amazon Australia. I'm in Wellington, I, I'm searching and I can see the product and I can see it's from New Zealand and then it will just get shipped from Auckland to Wellington just through the normal distribution channels. So that w and then Amazon in time will have a warehouse rumors that got land in Hamilton near the airport. And so Amazon will have a massive impact on the whole e-commerce landscape of New Zealand. So actually being on Amazon in Australia now will give you kind of put your stake in the ground and get you on the front foot for when that moves move happens. Oh, 
And, you know, it, it should be happening this year, whether unless things, things change, but that is going to have a material impact on the marketplace. In particular, I think it'll hurt like aggregate type websites that aren't brand owners. It will support brand owners is the answer. So if you're going to, if you want to go direct to consumers or direct through a marketplace, then that is going to be um, it's something you really want to know about. So I think Amazon Australia is, is it's just is like two and a half years in, but it's really, it's growing quickly. It's catching eBay as the biggest marketplace by the end of the year, it should be there. It just uh, released earnings or did $535 million uh, last 12, in the last um, calendar year. So it's starting to become a, a really a major player in all categories from grocery through clothing and electronics right across the board. So I think that's one to watch um, in this part of the world. Mm. Um, that, I mean, that's amazing. If um, if there's businesses out there that just have websites and haven't even made the the leap to e-commerce yet as a manufacturer, um, maybe this is a way. This is a way of making it start to become a better return on investment because you've got more people. It's not just five million in New Zealand. You've got the whole of Australia. You can get to. So it's an Australasia play in an environment where people. Um, may have started to buy online because they've been forced to because of due to recent events and yeah. you're getting some runs on the board in australia so as it does launch here um going back to what you said earlier that first 30 days you're seen very much right up the front and center of it so it could actually be a defensive play for some manufacturers that have retail aggregated sites as their key customer now that may get disintermediated by amazon when they turn up on new zealand shore yeah Correct. I think it's. I think it's a really. You must be looking at it as a manufacturer, as a, as a channel. Whether it's now or you know, certainly twelve months, but sooner the better. I think. <laughs> so given given these times. Well, how much? So, yeah, you? look at. Yeah. And the game's changing, so we've got to change. Mm. Thank you so much for your time today and for your insights and being so generous with them. I think uh, Amazon's not an area that a lot of people have. A depth of knowledge like you do from the business side um, certainly from the consumer side we've all heard of it um, a number of us use it uh, but it's not necessarily such an easy thing to get to grips on so um, you know thank you for being in the New Zealand business ecosystem providing this insight and uh, if you're a business listening you know this is maybe something that you should look at over the next six to twelve months so uh, we'll, as I said we'll put that those details in the show notes um, so yeah, again, thank you, Hamish, and uh, look forward to seeing the the products that you launch for um, fulfilled by Amazon uh, through the Cell Global company. Right. Hey, thanks so much, Ryan. I really appreciate uh, the chat. Thank you. You're welcome. This has been a Kiwi original brought to you by the New Zealand Made team. Thanks for watching. Uh, the New Zealand Made trademark is used by over 1,200 businesses in New Zealand. Uh, the New Zealand Made team licenses that trademark. Check if you're eligible at buynz.org.nz. If you feel that someone should see this, share it with them now. Otherwise, you can subscribe to youtube.com forward slash buynzmade and we'll see you on the next episode.